Howdy folks, this is Justro at Metcalf Mills bringing you Story Time Tuesday. And I've been doing some things that's kind of got me feeling empty inside, but I'm going to do my best to try to get you a story out here and tell you about some things. And it may not be a long Story Time Tuesday, but we'll see how it goes. I hope you enjoy it. Folks, I wanted to talk to you today about kind of how business was here in the mountains a long time ago. And all I know is from what I've been told, but I tried to soak it up as much as I could and as accurate as I could. And this may not be a long story time Tuesday, but uh, I hope you enjoy it anyway. Daddy told me that, uh, you know, people, they didn't run out to the store like people do this day and time. I mean, people was poorer and it took a lot more. And when they finally got cars, before they had cars, they had to walk or ride a horse or a wagon to the store. But, like I've told them, videos before the stores was closer by as a lot as almost a store in every community pretty much and like this day and time people run out to the store sometimes every day well that wasn't the way it was then they might go once a week or maybe even once a month and i wanted to tell you something about what daddy told me when he was growing up they was peddlers that come around they had a route they'd run peddling trading on different things and the peddler that come through here's name was Gurley Moss and daddy told me about him and he uh he drove an old truck it had like a a canvas sheet over the back of it, Daddy said, to keep stuff dry. And he had a route he'd go through different communities and places, and he'd buy stuff. Buy things from people that they, you know, got out of the wild, or they had, or whatever. He'd buy herbs, and like... I think Daddy said he'd buy ginseng and probably sassafras and all kinds of different herbs. And something else he bought was rabbits and squirrels. And my grandpa and Daddy, <clears throat> you know, they'd hunt. My grandpa would hunt and kill squirrels and sell them to this peddler, Girly Moss. And they would, uh, they would catch rabbits in a rabbit box. If you don't know what a rabbit box is, if you keep watching this channel, you're going to know real soon. And they'd catch rabbits in rabbit boxes and kill squirrels out in the woods. And I think Daddy said they'd just gut them is all they'd do just clean them just take their intestines out and that's all they'd do to them and old girly moss would buy these rabbits and squirrels and they said he'd take them up to Asheville and sell them up there at Asheville and i don't know how he kept them from ruining unless he had some kind of a cold box on that truck that he'd put them in but and maybe he took them that same day and didn't have to worry about them ruining but Daddy said he'd buy that kind of different things like that. And uh, Daddy told me a story one time about him. said Daddy had an old 10-ticker watch. Wasn't no good much. And he said old Gurley had a big old costly watch. Big old nice pocket watch. 
And he said Gurley offered to trade watches with him. And Daddy wouldn't do it, you know. He's a little boy and had his watch, and he liked that watch. And old Gurley might have just been going on with him. He might have never intended to trade, but he might have. I don't know. And Daddy said... Paul or some of them told him after that they said you ought to trade his watches with him he had a big costly watch so next time old girly come by daddy wanted to trade watches with him old girly wouldn't do it daddy said daddy said he mostly what they done business with was change you know silver silver dollars and dimes and all that kind of thing it wasn't a lot of cash money at that time i don't think and they probably didn't have enough to just you know to make to trade with cash money it was all just such low uh amounts and then they used silver dollars and something else i wanted to tell you daddy told me rabbits and squirrels he said Gurley had paid 25 cents for a squirrel and 35 cents for a rabbit. That was his prices at, at that time he was paying for them. And I wished I could remember some other things that Daddy said he bought. He might have bought catnip, queen of the matter, stuff like that. And... Something else Daddy said about Girly Moss. He said he had a big old pocket, but a big old money bag. Daddy said it was a long bag, and they had a zipper on the end of it. And he said old Girly would stretch that bag out on his arm and open the end of it and kind of count your money out there in his hand like that and pay you or get you change or whatever you needed. And he also had things on that truck that you could buy. You know, he'd buy different things in different places, and maybe somebody here had something to sell him, and somebody over there wanted to buy it. So he, he peddled stuff all the time, back and forth. Just, And I guess he had goods, certain goods he carried on there, too, that people could get. But there was also a store truck that come around. Al Edmonds and Oss Edmonds, his daddy's Oss Edmonds, they had a store truck, daddy said, that they would, had a route that would go through the communities, you know, from the store they had. And daddy said they, you know, they sold just like a kind of a grocery store on that truck. I guess they had some way to keep things cold on there. Or they might have not have. I don't remember exactly, but that store truck would run and it'd just go from house to house stopping at the road and you knew you know what about what day and time a store truck was coming, so you'd be out there or at least be watching for him and when he'd come up and stop at your house or your driveway, you'd go out there and trade with him what you needed. And I was trying to think about some of the things Daddy said they'd get off of the store truck. I don't really remember. Probably oatmeal. Uh, what other kind of things would they get? I wish I could remember better. I should have wrote some things down. It didn't stick in my memory, but they may come back around one of these days. He said they'd stop. He said old Hal's daddy would usually get out and go around somewhere on the other side of the truck and use the bathroom, and old Hal would come back there to the back and jump up on there and open them big doors, and that's a big thing for daddy, you know. He's just a little boy, never did see nobody up much, you know, out like that, and it's a big deal for the store truck to come and open them doors up, and daddy'd look in there at everything he had for sale, and Grandma would get what they needed off of the store truck. And 
that helped people that didn't have a way to get to the store. Maybe somebody's too old or didn't have a car or a horse or nothing. That helped them a lot to be able to, you know, get what they needed right there at their house. And it, I guess it was good for business, too. It helped the business, you know. People wasn't going to get buy from a store. They could bring it right to them and buy right there. So probably a big help for everybody. And then the general stores around, you know, they had all your groceries and everything like that you might need that you couldn't grow. They'd have sugar and coffee and salt and all them kind of things. And for people that didn't put up their own food, and they probably had all kinds of canned goods and things like that you needed. Dry goods and cloth and all that that people needed to live. And the certain places would buy things like, <clears throat> I was talking about Gurley Moss. Gurley didn't run too long, I don't think just when daddy was a real young boy. I don't know if he got too old or what, but I think that kind of faded out. And some of these certain places, Glenn Prophet's store, daddy said over at Ball Creek, he said they'd buy, uh, you know, buy herbs and things like that from you. And daddy said him and grandma picked enough queen of the matter and sold it over there at that a store, Glenn Prophet store, to buy Daddy an air rifle. He's wanting him an air rifle. So they picked and picked and picked, queen of the matter, and I don't know if they sold him anything else, but Daddy kept on and on and saved his money and was able to get him an air rifle, a BB gun. He said he is really tickled to get that when he got it. That's a big thing for a boy to have a you know, not like a <clears throat> our 22 rifle or something starting out, but to start out with an air rifle is a lot less dangerous, although it could kill you just the same. But, you know, that's how I started out. With a, they got me an air rifle when I was young, and I learned how to shoot and things like that. I never did really kill nothing, but, I mean, I killed a few things as a boy growing up, but. I didn't really kill things that just out of meanness, you know. If I killed something, maybe like a snake or something like that, before I learned about snakes as far as, you know, what to worry about and what not to. And uh, But I never did just run around killing anything. I, I wasn't that way. But, you know, as a boy, you thought you had to do certain things, and then you... You learn different, and if something, you know, like I said, I never was one to just shoot something to be shooting it, but you learn as you grow, and you get wiser about things, and, you know, about everything's got its place. A store was kind of a, I heard old people talk about it, a store was kind of a place to, you run up on your people in your community and your neighbors that you hadn't seen and talk about things. And it was a big hub for news and everything going on in the community. You know, somebody come into the store and, and tell them something like so-and-so died or this happened or we're going to be doing this, you know, or a corn shucking or whatever like that. And everybody, you know, they'd get the word out to everybody. And in the wintertime, I've heard them talk about Every store had a big wood or a coal heater in there to keep keep warm in the wintertime. And in the wintertime, you know, farm work was slow and doing things. And people would kind of gather up at the store around the heater and talk and visit. And that was a, you know, it was a special place just for that reason. Being a important place in the community for people to share news and things like that. And they, some country stores, it's kind of still that way, you know, people, it's the same thing when I run that store. Uh, there's several people that, you know, would hang around a lot of the time and talk and, and just a, com a community meeting place. And back before they had TVs and telephones and all that stuff to kind of keep people separate is what it does, really. 
I was telling Virginia the other day, you know, I hate texting. I mean, I text a lot of people. Now, if you're somebody watching this and you're somebody I text with, don't get the wrong feelings about it. That ain't what I mean. It's what I don't like about texting is you don't even get to hear that person's voice. I mean, it's bad enough. You, well, not bad enough, but when you talk on the phone, you don't see somebody. Well, when you text, you don't even hear their voice. So it's just, you know, I don't really like it, but I do it a lot, and it's an easy way to communicate. But I was just telling Virginia the other day and thinking about it, texting goes a long way to kind of isolate you. You know, I can talk to somebody off and on for a year and never hear their voice. And... There's a lot to being able to hear somebody's voice when you talk to them. I mean, you can hear, well, for one thing, everybody's different. We talked about that, what, yesterday evening? And, uh, you know, everybody's got their own voice, and everybody's special different, and it's good to hear their voice. And it's funny... A lot of times how people communicate and how they talk if you really listen to that everybody's got their own style kind of I mean there's a few people I think it tries to have somebody else's style and that ain't no good because they're really robbing everybody around them of their own style and their own way of saying and doing things and and that's important and that's special everybody's got their own and It just, I was thinking about it, how it just robs you of hearing somebody's voice. But, of course, it, it goes hand in hand with life getting so busy, you know. We don't have time to talk on the phone a lot of the times, and we don't get to hear people's voice. It's, it's just imagine if you, if, you, if you lived in a time they wouldn't know telephones, and the only time you heard somebody's voice was when you was there with them, looking at them. Now, that'd really be something if you think about it, because that would, to me, in my mind, that would make everybody stay more in the present moment, if you, if you think that way, because you realize this is the only time I'm going to get to hear this person or see them. I ain't going to go FaceTime them or text them or call them or something later on. You know, that's it. And it'd make you value people a whole lot more if that bit of time you had right there was the only, the only time that you had with them. That would really, in my mind, make you value them a lot more. And goes along with meeting up at the store you know you see people that you don't necessarily maybe go visit all the time but you see them there and you talk to them and you you hear what they're saying and how they're saying it and they people get excited and they talk different when they get excited and they got their own by words you call them and the way they communicate things and it just you think about it it's really it's really something special just to hear somebody's voice because there ain't another in the world like it. It's the only one in this whole big wide world. And that's special. And I think that's about all I've got on my mind right now about the old stores and the way people done things here and, and something else I wanted to talk about was how people bartered that was kind of a form of business in the olden days was bartering you know <clears throat> i've heard my grandpa he had a 22 remington 22 rifle he had and he told me he said i got that from my brother and i give him seven bushels of corn for that rifle so maybe Paul's brother had a bad crop year and they didn't have no corn to eat or whatever. And I don't think it was a lot of just giving people 
just like today, you know, we just give somebody something and don't think a thing about it. A lot of people do. And I don't think it was that way then. People had, they had a sense of pride to them, which is good and bad. And, and they had independence, you know, and they didn't, they didn't, I think they was mostly real good if you asked for something and they could spare it, you know, that they would let you have it. I don't mean it that way. I mean, certain people, you know, they wanted to make their own way and pay their own way. And, you know, that was Paul's brother. And you say, well, why didn't he just give him that seven bushels of corn? Well, they, they wanted to maintain their individual self, you know, and, and their pride and, and not be, they didn't want to be beholden to somebody, you know. Like, he didn't want to be in debt for them seven bushels of corn. He said, I got this rifle, I'll trade you for that corn. And, you know, they swapped and they traded, and everything was done and good. They wasn't nobody thinking, well, you know, I done this for you, now I, I'm going to be looking for you to do something for me. And that's important, too, a lot of times. And my grandpa, he had an old 38 Smith lemon squeezer pistol. And he, he said there's this old man over on Indian Creek over where they lived. I think the old man was the same old man that owned that corn mill that my grandpa run after he died, if I remember right. And Paul said this old man wanted Paul to plow a field, and it's a big old field. And Paul worked a week, a solid week, plowing with the horses, plowed this big old field up. And this man gave him this pistol. So he worked all week for this pistol. He didn't just go buy it. He worked all week plowing, and this man gave him this pistol. And that's kind of how bartering was, you know. People would barter and trade without money changing hands. And they'd do something else you call swapping work. People would... They would help you with your work, and you'd help them with their work, and it just, whatever needed to be done, and that wasn't like necessarily, that was just swapping time, it wasn't like trading something, trading some material good or something like that. They swapped work, and they helped each other, and you know, if you're doing a job, and you got nobody helping you, it goes pretty slow, but if you got two or three or four other people helping you can get it done real fast and it's easier and you know that's that's something that's always been hard for me i've been stubborn about that all my life try to do everything myself and you know i've got people that offer to help all the time billy and them they always good to offer to help with anything going on and they have helped and i've tried to help them a little too and you know it's good and that just makes you closer to people and, you know, things like that, the community aspect of it. And swapping work like that, it helps everybody. And I've been around that a lot. I've known several people that would, every year, they had to help each other with their crops back and forth, you know, and they always had help. And that was important and meant a lot, and it helped people survive because they didn't have money to just be forking out, paying, you know, back and forth, paying each other. They didn't. If they did have it, they didn't even go to the trouble. They just swapped work, and they know they could count on each other to help. And that's the way it worked. And it got people by doing that. And like I said, it just furthers and encourages community when you help each other that way. And it makes you a lot stronger. We wasn't made to be just by ourselves doing everything. It's, you interact with people and you help each other and it, it's, 
it does something for you you know it it makes you feel good it makes you feel good and it's a blessing it's a blessing to help somebody and even if you're swapping work you know it makes you feel good to work and help somebody and they help you and that kind of thing I hope you have enjoyed this little talk about business and the mountains. And I'm sure there's a lot of things that I ain't remembering, but it may come back to me. And something else I wanted to tell you is if I tell you something and I've done told you on a video back before, I apologize for that. It's hard to remember. I'm getting up in the videos now. And it's hard to remember exactly what I've told you and what I ain't. That's why I try to keep on one subject. And that way, if I have told you a little bit of a story of some kind, there's still a whole big subject to go along with it, so it ain't telling you the same thing again. But it's hard to remember what I have shared with you and what I ain't. But anyway, just so you know, man, Virginia has been picking some pears today and we're gonna can them and I'm gonna share that with you probably tomorrow maybe have a video maybe about pear picking and uh, like I told you the other day we've had to do some things around the house here kind of taking care of some of my mother and daddy's things and that's been kind of hard to do in a way and anyway that's what we're doing and part of what we're doing we're doing a lot trying to take care of our stuff our stuff that's ready to be harvested and these beans we canned beans the other day canned 35 quarts of beans the other day and everything's doing good seems like and we're just plugging along and looking forward to getting back to doing some it's all fun to me but doing some get back to doing some fun work in the shop and I'm excited about that and I can't wait like this video if you liked it subscribe if you ain't already tell your friends about me come and see me tomorrow and maybe we can pick some pears we'll do it together this is Justro at Matt Calf Mills I look forward to seeing you next time